Welcome everybody. You have found yourself with the meeting this week of the Rotary E-Club of Silicon Valley. And like every week, we are completely and totally jazzed to bring you stories of service to others. And in our case, our club is particularly interested in how this, plan, this plays out with regard to entrepreneurship, education, and innovation. These are the things that excite the members and hopefully the guests as well of the Rotary E-Club of Silicon Valley. And this week, we have presenting to us two young men in Chicago, Illinois. I was uh, fortunate to meet these folks via a uh, conference that I attended just a few weeks ago. And they have taken an interest that they have in, in a popular video game and turned it via, via a beautiful entrepreneurial path uh, mm -hmm. into a business for themselves. And so we are going to pass it along to Scotty and Mitchell. Everyone, please welcome Scotty Revlick and Mitchell Brown. All right, hello, my name is Scotty Vrablick. And I am Mitchell Brown. And we are sophomore students at Carmel Catholic High School located in Mundelein, <coughs> Illinois, around Chicago. Today we will be discussing the last five years and the journey of our entrepreneurial experience while owning and operating a business. So Scotty and I are the co-developers and co-owners of the website and mobile app clean Minecraft videos. Clean Minecraft videos offers a solution to millions of inappropriate Minecraft videos on YouTube. When Scotty and I were in sixth grade, we found a need for a service like this, as when we enjoyed watching Minecraft videos and were in our Minecraft addiction phase, we were watching a lot of Minecraft videos but found them to be extremely inappropriate. And it was when my brother actually, bought, my little brother, watch an inappropriate Minecraft video that we decided that we need to make a solution and a change, if you will. So currently, we have two licenses of clean Minecraft videos, a recreational license and an educational license. The recreational license offers over 1,000 manually screened, guaranteed appropriate Minecraft videos that come from eight different content creators that kids know and love today. And we have recently branched out into the educational realm. As a lot of schools are beginning to use Minecraft in the classrooms, we believe that providing appropriate yet educational and exciting material to classrooms is very important. So we currently have, in Clean Minecraft Videos Education Edition, over hundreds of guaranteed appropriate educational specific Minecraft videos. And on top of that, we have begun building lesson plans that teachers can use directly into their classrooms for Minecraft. Mitchell and I have also recently released a new franchise of our Clean Minecraft Videos brand titled Minecraft Mania. Minecraft Mania offers library programs at local libraries throughout the northwest suburbs of Chicago, where participants of all ages and all experience levels can come in and enjoy Minecraft for an hour and a half, make new friends along the way, and also complete challenges and activities with one another during the program. And in addition to Minecraft Mania, Mitchell and I are also launching our Minecraft for Good project, hopefully as soon as this summer. The Minecraft for Good project will, be, will bring these same Minecraft Mania programs into or for children in need at local hospitals and special education institutions. These completely voluntary programs would include Mitchell and I providing all of the technology in terms of laptops and tablets, Minecraft servers, and Minecraft accounts that are needed to pursue the program, something that Mitchell and I will donate, if you will. So in order to raise funds for that, we have created a GoFundMe page at cleanminecraftvideos.com slash Minecraft for good in hopes of receiving contributions to allowing this program to be possible. So aside of just managing, managing the businesses and promoting the businesses, we have received the incredible opportunity to present at several presentations and give many keynote addresses throughout the last few years. For the last three consecutive years, Mitchell and I presented at the Students Involved with Technology Conference as morning keynote speakers, at the Google Educator Group's annual film festival at Google's Chicago headquarters for the last two consecutive years, for the last four years, we have been involved in the Illinois Computing Educators Conference located in Schaumburg, Illinois. And we also recently returned from Orlando, Florida, from the National Future of Education Technology Conference that we were fortunate enough to participate in as well. 
So even though Scotty and I have seen many tremendous pros in developing our young emerging business, there have been a lot of challenges that we have encountered throughout the process of developing a business as young entrepreneurs. And we'd like to share a few of those challenges with you. So the number one, the greatest challenge that Scotty and I have faced in developing this business is the phase of early development. When we initially developed the solution and had the idea that we wanted to create clean Minecraft videos, we were leaning towards creating either a website or mobile app. Yet Scotty and I, as sixth grade students, had extremely minimal knowledge in website coding experience or mobile app design. So we really didn't know how to go about developing this solution. And also, as we were young entrepreneurs, we really did not have a lot of financial capabilities to, um, to market and publicize our company. And as you see, that picture on the left was actually our first go at a, um, a marketing campaign of a YouTube ad video. And it was actually pretty effective. We reached about 10,000 prospective parents who were Google searching terms like appropriate Minecraft videos. We also used Google AdWords to reach people who were Google searching terms like appropriate Minecraft videos or why are so many Minecraft videos inappropriate. But overall, even though these avenues were pretty effective, we still were on the small scale as we didn't have a lot of funds to procure in the first place. And this really stagnated our growth and we, were, we really weren't able to grow largely for the first four years of development. And through not having a lot of financial capital, being uh, younger students, Mitchell and I have had a very difficult problem with exposure for our business in the better first half of running our company. And by minimal exposure, I literally mean that there were certain weeks where we only had one unique visitor view our website, let alone people that purchased our product. And this came as a difficult problem to begin with, since very early on, a purchase or subscription of our license was only a one-time payment of 99 cents, where our annual recurring expenses to operate our website and own our domain exceeded $400 per year. So it was really the matter of not even profiting, but just breaking even. Uh, that was really the challenge uh, to begin with. Um, but the challenges and facing problems is not something that Mitchell and I just look on as a past issue, since challenges are always with us during the continued development of our product. So first and foremost, we are full-time students. So that really takes away a lot of time from expanding upon clean Minecraft videos and now our several other franchises and branches of our company. Specifically, since Mitchell and I do watch every video from beginning to end, it takes a lot of time to even just add two or three videos to our clean Minecraft videos website, let alone offer massive updates of new hundreds of videos. So continued development does come uh, with a challenge, especially with everything that we do have going on. So even though we really have experienced a lot of challenges in early and continued development, the opportunities that we have experienced really outweigh the setbacks. And primary, the first takeaway that we've been able to um, take from our company is the sheer amount of incredible opportunities that we have received. When we first developed our website and mobile app in sixth grade, we had no idea that we would be keynoting at student-led technology conferences in front of thousands of kids or attending internationally acclaimed adult-only conferences. So the incredible opportunities, so many incredible opportunities come with developing a company and some that you don't even know exist until you're accepted to them. We've also learned the experience of garnering tremendous support. When you're in the early phases of development, you need to be reaching out and connecting with as many people as possible, whether it be through your parents' Facebook account, teachers, administrators, or even industry professionals. You want to reach out to as many people as possible and build those connections because you really never know where those connections will take you in the later world. And obviously, as you've developed a business as young entrepreneurs, you learn so much business world exposure that you can take into the later world or hopefully continue to develop back into your current company. We have learned um, very important stress coping skills, having to make important decisions 
in critical decisions on the welfare of our business, also learning how to manage every single aspect of our company. We've also learned the importance of being professional when employing people. We currently employ over five other students for our Minecraft Mania library programs, but also the importance of being professional when you are being employed at these library programs and understanding the, uh, how contracts work and how you need to be very punctual as well. Most importantly, we've learned that collaboration and people skills are really important because you might have this wonderful idea, but you really need to be able to get it across to people to build your business. But the most important takeaway that we have been able to say that we have taken away from Clean Minecraft videos is the opportunity to reflect on some of the mistakes or things we could have done differently in the early stages of development and learn and not make those mistakes in the future, but also to improve other people's entrepreneurial endeavors so that those same people, though that, so that those people will not make the same mistakes that we encountered in the beginning. And the last key aspect that we always like to discuss when talking about our company and have presented on at all of the presentations and keynote addresses we have given over the years is the importance of staying in what Mitchell and I call the inspired mindset. And first and foremost, by the inspired mindset, we mean that realizing that money should not be the number one priority of beginning a new business, but rather a byproduct. Because if money is your number one goal, then you're not going to be able to offer effective solutions since your reasoning will be solely for profit and gaining money rather than offering an effective solution to the problem that you're helping to solve. And at the same time, you want to remain motivated in an effort to work for the greater cause while at the same time committing to helping society. And in the process, you will inspire not only yourself, but the people that are taking advantage of your solution and the other people that are there supporting you throughout uh, your journey. And then with that, we would like to thank you for listening to our presentation today, and we can now open it up to questions. Excellent. All right, Scotty and Mitchell, fantastic job. Very cool to hear your story, and I'm excited uh, to to get us into our questions. First, though, I want to uh, I want to say that some some number of our members and guests will will have heard of Minecraft, Minecraft probably, but may not have a good sense of what it really is. You know, can can you give us the short description of what Minecraft is, and maybe that'll convey some some idea for these folks who are like why it's so very popular. Sure. So Minecraft is probably one of the most popular video games in the past century. It's essentially virtual Legos where children go onto a computer and are in this first person world where they can build anything they want to. It's been downloaded by over literally hundreds of millions of people. And actually, Minecraft was just recently sold to Microsoft for $2 billion. So it's no small deal. Kids love this game and they love playing it. But yeah, essentially it's a virtual Legos where kids can build and work with one another to build and interact with one another in the game. Awesome, Mitchell. Um, so what I'd like to do is open to, uh, op open to our, our members who have joined us on, on the call. I wanna introduce them first. Uh, I'll, I'll start with, uh, with Roger in, in Canada. So Roger Plester is a, a retired lawyer in Kamloops, Canada. Wave to the crowd. You're a good man, Roger. And then down under in Australia, in uh, Brett, I believe Sydney at the moment, is Brett Sham. Yep. Uh, um, uh, Melbourne today. Melbourne. All right. So Melbourne. All right. So at any rate, uh, Brett, would you get us going with, uh, with with a question for our young entrepreneurs? Yeah. Leading on from um, Rushton's question around what Minecraft was, I think you touched upon um, the educational element of the videos and, and, and how Minecraft is used for that. Can you elaborate a bit more on, on, on that educational aspect of it? Sure. So when Microsoft purchased Minecraft around 2015, Microsoft also introduced a new platform that is titled Minecraft Education Edition. And Minecraft Education Edition is used by over 1,000 public and private schools uh, throughout the world. So Minecraft Education Edition allows Minecraft to effectively be brought into the classroom so instead of a classical or traditional rather uh, textbook and note taking uh, lecture, they can complete activities through Minecraft with the Minecraft Education Edition platform and they're working together so that helps their team building skills, which is a huge plus to uh, many schools. It also touches on uh, the digital citizenship aspect. 
And then uh, the biggest advantage that many schools see with uh, Minecraft Education Edition is that the teacher moderation tools um, allow them to specifically interact with the students and also send them messages or prompts uh, to make sure that they're staying on task and taking out a good educational value. And I would say in using Minecraft in general, you're getting these kids much more engaged. So for example, if you take history class, kids will be much more engaged if they get hands-on experience with like the Globe Theater or Mount Rushmore, some tangible object that they can interact with rather than just listening to a teacher lecture about it and read about it in a textbook. So I think that, that's the number one uh, benefit that Minecraft has to offer as an interactive educational resource. Thanks. There's been, there's been a lot of discussion in the ed tech community about, uh, about how Minecraft can unleash a lot of creativity in the classroom and it just becomes the teacher's job to make sure that, that what they're doing is aligned with the goals for the class. It's, it's, it's cool stuff to see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Roger, you're up. Yeah, first of all, I must say that I'm extremely impressed with both of you Thank and you. what you have done. And uh, you've learned some, um, uh, some points and particularly about marketing and also uh, developing your company that has taken a lot of people many years to learn. A couple questions for you, however. First of all, did you uh, do the uh, programming for your website? We, we, we did mixed. So in the beginning, our primary focus was saying, hey, let's just get our website out there and then we can worry about the advanced features and advanced coding later. So we used this third party resource called Weebly. It's kind of like a drag and drop website builder feature. So we were not um, in the primary stages really actually writing the code. We were simply dragging elements and then editing it from there. But as our website became more complicated, we had to incorporate like login authentication features and other more complicated aspects. So that's where the coding started to come into play. But in the beginning, it was just us getting our idea out there. Then we worried about the coding later. All right. Secondly, did you um, did you code uh, you, the app yourselves, and how did you? If, and if you did, how did you go about to learn how to program? All right, so that was also a uh, kind of a mixed thing. Um, since getting our app up out there, rather is was like kind of at the same priority as just getting our website out there. So it was really being able to say, "Hey, this is a thing that we have," and then obviously since doing it through coding although it's uh, much more unlimited with its possibilities, it does take a significantly longer time. So at the very beginning, we used a resource that is called Infinite Monkeys. And it, <laughs> it's a very odd name, uh, but it, uh, it's basically like uh, the mobile app creation uh, of Weebly. So it's just like a drag and drop thing where you could put content on there and YouTube videos on there. And that's how uh, we first uh, got out there. Um, but the primary reason that we changed it, like we of course wanted to change it to make it look more professional, get out there more, uh, was because uh, Apple, when we were submitting to the app store, they didn't like our first app. It wasn't like, you know, fancy enough for them. Mm -hmm. So what we did is uh, we connected with someone uh, who's about two years older than us. And he created like a more unlimited open platform for us to work with. So it offered better design <laughs> tools that we can use. Um, but the configuration um, and the back end of everything and the videos that went on there and the embedding of everything and kind of like all those details was were things that um, Mitchell and I uh, particularly did ourselves. And to answer your question about how we learn to program, um, it was really through our school. So we were in middle school at the time when we were creating our mobile app and we went to a very technologically advanced uh, elementary and middle school. So learning to code and learning to program was actually a class uh, that we took all three years of middle school, both semesters of each year. It was STEAM, yeah. The STEAM yeah, it was, class. It was like a STEAM class and it was uh, 45 minutes uh, classes three times a week and that recurred for three consecutive years. So that provided us with an immense um, amount of knowledge that we needed that helped us uh, create the platform of our app and later uh, the continued development of our website. Very cool. Now, yes. when you think about, um, you know, getting, getting more and more identified clean Minecraft videos that the people who are, are, you know, paying for your service, you know, can access, 
sounds like you have hired, you said five other students to, to work with you. Now, yeah. I, I'm, I'm curious about that as a process, you know what I mean? Because you guys, you guys essentially said, hey, let's start a business. And that by itself would intimidate a lot of people like, oh, I don't know, you know, what's involved, blah, blah, blah. But you went on. And, and then like a next point of intimidation would be hiring other people. Tell me about that as a process. How did you figure out you needed to do that? Did, how, how did you how did you get get the resources to kind of uh, get get to be able to pay a set of people to kind of get things going so that you could accelerate what you were what you were doing? For sure. So Scott and I in, experienced this conflict. And I think it was either in seventh or eighth grade where school was getting a lot more challenging, but we still wanted to be building our website and app. So I think we sat down and had a conference and said, "Hey, we really have you know a stringent mission on being able to guarantee." every video that's appropriate on our website. So we were a little apprehensive about hiring other people, but we, we sat down and really planned out if we were to hire other help, we needed to have high integrity, high moral standards for these people and be able to be trustworthy. And then we actually never followed through on the plans of hiring people for our website per se, but we actually hired people for our Minecraft programs, but the same set of standards follow. We go through and have a lot of conversations about saying, hey, is this person really trustworthy of being able to carry our company on the professional level that we want to display? So it's, it's, it's definitely been a challenge, but as we've been growing our company, we've realized that we've actually need to hire other people to actually grow our business. So that's something that we've done and are proud to say that we've done. Right. And so I'm um, add on to what Mitchell said a little, uh, like he said, so we do have five people that are helping us host our Minecraft mania programs. And that is currently kind of the primary function of um, our company and the franchises that we offer. Uh, so the reason that we have them schoolwork is definitely one thing, but Mitchell and I are also fortunate enough to have a large number of these programs that are offered on a monthly basis. And uh, just as of right now, we have like an unfinalized summer schedule of at least uh, 30 programs. And then between September and October, we could be looking at another, another 10, 12, maybe even 20 programs if everyone uh, comes through on that. So it was really the process of the only way that we would physically be able to expand is if we brought other people onto the team and help us uh, with clean Minecraft videos and these Minecraft mania programs. And of course, we have trainings with them. We mutually agree upon who's being hired. We both know them on a personal and professional level. So we know that they will uh, represent our company well. Um, and then that library and then other libraries uh, will continue to program with us, of course. And, and I'm going on to the side of actually employing people. Um, that's kind of we it's kind of like the full experience we have them sign contracts like i just said we have them train and everything uh so they really it's really like reflective of the way that mitchell and i are hired by the libraries we're hiring them uh, as independent contractors on a per program or per uh job or project basis so there's like a set payment amount set guidelines and then we send them all of the information uh, that they need in addition to that all right roger yeah, one question about uh, the format. Have you incorporated your company under the uh, laws of the state of uh, Illinois? Good question. So we, we've we actually, in, in the past few weeks, we've been discussing the possibility of, you know, buying an, or buying into an incorporation or LLC. <laughs> we, we get a few more privileges, if you will, of being that, but it's just something we've never gotten around to. But we've we've seen the benefits and we've weighed the benefits and are actually looking into this at that moment or at this moment. Yeah. So both of you then are operating as a, a partnership between both of you. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. Brett, do you have... And that was very interesting to hear how you... I'm sorry. I'm very interesting that uh, you tagged the word independent contractors for the five people that uh, do work for you, because that takes you outside the requirements of um, having to um, do payrolls and also to um, keep all the standards by the state in terms of paying things like EI and uh, pension plans and all the rest of it. <laughs> exactly, exactly, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> and like everything else, right? If that's something that you look at and you're like, you know, whatever it is, it can be figured out. So it's just a matter of, of sitting down with people who can help us figure it out and figuring it out. Then suddenly mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're always part of a smaller group that, that's willing to go to the trouble, right? Cool stuff. Mm -hmm. Brett, do you have uh, 
Any, any yeah, just a question around um, with Minecraft. Are there any issues in Minecraft around things such as you know, cyber security and cyber bullying um, compared to you know other other um, online um, environments? So yeah, and um, so we actually when we give um, these presentations at conferences such as Illinois Computing Educators and FETC, uh, we have like fifty to sixty minute uh, sessions where we talk about the use of Minecraft in education and there really is kind of that cyberbullying concern, if you will, that really, well, obviously it kind of makes parents a little cautious about letting their kids uh, play the game, let alone schools and teachers um, and administrators. So the thing uh, that can get to the cyberbullying aspect, and that's definitely a very important aspect in like the digital society today, is that through Minecraft multiplayer, so in essence, you are playing with tens of thousands of other people all around the world at any given time to interact with each other and everything. And through these multiplayer um, features, if you will, there is a private chat system where you can communicate one-on-one -on -one with just somebody else completely privately where you're identified as nothing more than a username. You don't know who this person is, how old they are. You don't even know what country um, they're contacting you from. So that has actually led to a lot of cases involving um, cyberbullying, cyber very inappropriate content being displayed. And there was actually recently a case uh, very close to us where I believe it was like a 30 year old gamer um, abducted, abducted a girl who was about, I believe 11 or 12 years old. And then she was like found in a hotel with him. Through, in the, and this was all through Minecraft. This was through Minecraft private messaging you know, the 30 year old abductor pretended to be, you know, a girl her age. And then, and then he said, Hey, let's meet up at so-and-so since we, you know, live close by. So there definitely is that cyberbullying concern and also that big security concern of something like that. And, and we identify that in our presentations as one of the big cons of just playing gaming Minecraft itself. But Minecraft education edition offers a lot of solutions to this issue. Most notably, teachers can host what's known as like you know their own private servers so only people in the school can join and they can even turn off chat so people can't be communicating or bullying cyberbullying one another or saying foul words to one another in the game and if they do they can be kicked off the server or be punished you know as they're in the classroom for those actions so that's one thing that minecraft edu really offers as a plus and that's why minecraft is being used in education because it has those monitors and controls for cyberbullying so are there the type of things that you need to look out for then when you do the reviews of your videos? So when we were in seventh grade, we, we really laid out a policy of what we deemed was inappropriate. And this ranged from vulgar, you know, vulgar language, sexual references, drug references, all the way down to moderately considerable, considerable words. So when we watch the videos, we watch not only for what the narrator in the video is saying, but also what is being performed in the game. And also if they're on like the multiplayer environments, there's a little chat box in the bottom left-hand corner. We watch that chat to make sure that nothing inappropriate pops up because we don't want any exposure to these little kids of being able to see, you know, these words being said or these words being spoken. So then they relay that and deem that as okay. Right. And with that, a thing that are on our videos too, we have a lot of um, videos of people playing on single player worlds. So there really is not that chat feature since they are playing by themselves. And that's, that's a plus to Mitchell and uh, myself since we don't have to kind of double screen everything for <laughs> content and also making sure everything that's being said on the server chat is appropriate. Um, but some comments that we've also received is that it's, you know, it's proving that, you know, single player can be, you know, just as fun, just as exciting, whatever, since you still have access to the unlimited possibilities and whatnot. So uh, to, to kind of wind things down as we're running to the end of our, our half hour or so stretch, we've got one last question for you. Then I'll, uh, I'll finish up the recording and then give you guys the last word. So, so be thinking in terms of like what, whatever your encouragement for our, our viewing audience might be. But the last question, uh, is what's next for you guys? Like, you know, as you look at your business and what you hope to do, you know, you talked a little bit about, you know, some of the things coming up in the next few months, but, but what are your hopes going forward? So our hopes are definitely to continue expanding on clean Minecraft videos. As, as we're looking towards the summer, we're looking to a big off period of school where we can really hit home our company and our library programs. 
our library programs are expanding at this moment. We've hit, I believe, over somewhat of 60 programs in the last year, and now we're actually turning to digital programs. So kind of in this manner, we're actually connecting with libraries out of the state even, where we're hosting programs virtually. So we're really just hoping to expand through our uh, website and mobile app, Clean Minecraft videos, but also our library programs throughout the whole nation, hopefully. For sure. And then our, um, our current two points of expanding, obviously, Clean Minecraft videos is over the summer we plan on uh, completely expanding and upgrading our Clean Minecraft videos education edition uh, platform, uh, where our goal is to triple the content that is currently available for educators and teachers. And then, of course, launching our Minecraft for Good project, where we're offering uh, voluntary programs at hospitals and special ed schools. So definitely the two avenues we're looking at pursuing uh, this summer and then hopefully carrying forth uh, in the future as well. Wonderful stuff. So I would like to thank you both for a fantastic presentation. Uh, I would also like to thank uh, in Canada, Roger Plested for, for joining in, as well as in Australia, Brett Sham. Uh, to all of our members and guests, we thank you for taking part each week with uh, our attempts to bring great stories of innovation, entrepreneurship, and education to, uh, to a rotary audience. And we hope you will do two things for us. First, there is an opportunity just a little bit farther down the webpage to let us know you were here. Please do the attendance thing. It's good for us to kind of know uh, how many and from where and to get those ideas. We certainly won't spam you with any of, you know, with, with anything as a result of being part of that. Uh, and then there is a discussion section at the bottom, the discuss, D-I-S-Q-U-S section at the bottom, where you can respond to other people's comments. You can leave your own and, uh, and, and just, just share your thoughts on any aspect of the meeting, both, uh, both this program and any other component of, uh, of this week's meeting. So with that, I would like to pass it back to Scotty and Mitchell for the final word. So as young entrepreneurs in starting an emerging business, I would like to say to everybody out there, whether you are 16 or 60, if you're looking to start a business or pursue your idea, this might sound cliche, but I say go for it. Because when we were in sixth grade, I was sitting on my couch watching five videos at a time and putting them in a spreadsheet. And I really had no idea that it would expand to, you know, hosting a video conference with the e Rotary Club of Silicon Valley. So you have no idea where your little idea, <laughs> where your little idea might take you and how it will expand and how it will flourish. So I say, no matter how small or how particular your idea is, always go for it because you never know where it will take you. Yep, and definitely don't let any of the downfalls or cons or not being able to get out there uh, discourage you at all. It took Mitchell and I three and a half years at least to start breaking even, let alone uh, profiting from our uh, company. Uh, but now that everything is taken off, it's been worth waiting the three and a half years for sure. For sure. Great encouraging words. Thank you guys very much. Thank you all for watching and we'll see you next week. Right. Thank you. Thank you.